I want to. Hi, Larry. This is Larry Houston up front here, and uh, been my friend for a billion years, and uh, uh, and you may know his work uh, on uh, X Men and other things. So, uh, uh, um, say hi to him at some point. Stand up, Larry. He was one of the best writers. And when I would get his scripts, it was like the easiest scripts to work on. Because Bob started out as a storyboard artist and became a writer. And so his scripts were always, you read it, you can instantly see what he had written. You can visualize the cinema. And it was excellent to work from. So I thought I'd tell you guys about, he's such a good writer. And uh, yeah. let you know that little tidbit. Ah, I, I do. I do appreciate it, and uh, yeah, those years in storyboard uh, actually did help a lot as far as making scriptable stuff. Um, although I have to confess, uh, part of the joy of being a writer was uh, uh, you could actually write things like, you know, 10,000 warriors come charging over the horizon on horseback uh, to attack an equal number of pirates and, uh, and uh, mothership, to, you know, and you're just like, you know, it's like, oh, that's so easy when you write it, but as a storyboard artist, it's eee! Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, uh, Those are the kind of stuff you read as, when you're an artist going, how the hell am I going to draw this? <laughs> <laughs> the hell was he speaking? <laughs> yeah. I, but gonna, I did try to avoid that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I was, a question before I get, because sure. I'm not in line. <laughs> um, I'll give you the Is joke. there uh, anything, any uh, story from Filmation that comes to mind that these people have never heard of that you might want to share? You know, all that craziness that we had to deal with back then? Well, it was pretty crazy. And of course, we had the uh, cartoons all over the walls to, uh, <laughs> uh, to, to talk about it. But uh, uh, I mean, because it was really pretty chaotic back then. But it was all free will. It was all, everybody was having fun. Mm -hmm. It was very interactive. We'd all go out to lunch and talk and stuff. And yep. it was like, a, very unstructured to, mm. to a degree. And everybody helping out each other. I mean, uh, when you were behind on your board, you know, you could uh, uh, divide up some pages to various people who would, uh, <laughs> you know, help you along and, and help you to hit your deadline. Um, uh, and then you'd do the same uh, next time around. Yeah. But uh, um, when, uh, when it was your turn. But uh, it was, it was a trim the greatest thing about filmation was they would train and yes. no one else would do it. They did not pay as well as anyone else, right. but they'd take people who could draw but didn't know what they were doing and teach them what they were doing, uh, how to do stuff. And uh, some of the greatest, uh, some really great people uh, came out of filmation. Mm -hmm. Not all of them will admit it, but that was where they learned. It's sort of like working for Roger Corman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true. The, yeah. A lot of the guys like like uh, Bruce Tim. We I started there. Bruce Tim started there. Um, uh, Jeff Darrow started mm -hmm. there, and Paul Smith. Those mm -hmm. are all artists that some of you might know. Uh, Bruce Tim wanted to do the Batman series and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was a great training ground where everybody kind of started. Uh, Vicky Jensen was one right. of the board artists. Yep, and she, uh, went, she on to went on to direct Shrek. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, Steve Hickner, who directed yeah. uh, um, Baldo, or oh, the, yes. right, the, so, yeah, that, he, he went on to DreamWorks, and uh, yes. so uh, yeah, we have, there's uh, and God, there was somebody really famous who never will admit that he worked there. But <laughs> well, for instance, Joe Straczynski went on to do Babylon Five and yes, everything else. Right. Was right. So, uh, um, but. That's yeah. back to Transformers. Back to Transformers. Yeah. Hi, I had uh, two questions. Sure. One, did you ever chafe under any of the mandates that would trickle down from Hasbro for any reason? Like, did they ever give anything that was maybe intrusive that you'd have to like rewrite a story idea you had or a particular plot or script to introduce an element that they wanted? Um, or did you find that sometimes to be like a boon? And um, I guess my second question, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, you. actually do both and then I'll see if they tie together anyway. <laughs> um, did you ever see the follow-up series, Beast Machines? Did you ever have any thoughts on that? Uh, okay. The, the thing that, 
the th I, that actually does all tie together. Um, the thing that confused us, uh, what we didn't realize, uh, and it would have helped a lot if Hasbro had just told us outright, um, but as we were into the third season of, uh, of Beast Wars, um, they did start wanting um, things that we couldn't quite understand. Sillier stuff, lighter stuff, less complicated stories. Um, uh, and uh, with uh, more female-oriented stuff. Um, now, what we didn't realize was the whole industry was changing. Uh, uh, Larry and I were you know, bury it in our, old world, our own world, and as far as we could tell, we were doing a great job, and it was a hit show and everything, and yet they were having trouble, Hasbro. Uh, and we didn't realize that, essentially, um, uh, we were losing our target audience to video games, which had, you know, just started to get really good. And uh, when I look back on it now, I can understand, no matter how violent we were, we weren't going to compete with uh, Grand Theft Auto. And, uh, and uh, a lot of the other shows we were working on had uh, a lot of other restrictions uh, about, you know, again, the, the He-Man thing and uh, Bureau of Standards and Practices. And uh, uh, you're not allowed to have, uh, you know, Wolverine has to wear a... Uh, oh, so, wear a helmet when he's on his motorcycle. He's not allowed to point his claws at people. And, and then, you, so you can put up with that kind of crap where you can go shoot cops and bang hookers in your video game. And I was like, um, so yes, I understand why we were losing our audience, but we didn't know it then. We didn't understand why all of a sudden they were trying to take something that was working so well and turn it into pablum. And uh, so, um, you know, we started fighting back and we lost our jobs. Um, it was not, it, it was more like they just decided not to use us on this new Beast Machines show and they brought in other writers uh, who were fine writers, but you know, they definitely uh, had those restrictions that we didn't have before about, uh, you know, just they were trying to figure out what they could do to fight against the, uh, the video games. Um, and even now, uh, everything has to be a little more com comedy oriented. It has to, uh, the, the things that video games don't do very well generally so far, or at least at the time, were things like uh, humor. Um, uh, they weren't really girl oriented. Um, they weren't soft. They weren't aimed at younger kids. And so all of those things were what they were trying to turn the show into. Funnier, softer, aimed at girls, aimed at younger audiences. So, uh, yes, we started to get that uh, kind of uh, flack from Hasbro, and uh, but uh, it ended up being passed on to the next group of writers. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure.